Hello everyone, this is Jude from EasyTex. If you have recently upgraded to Windows 10 from Windows 7 or 8.1, then this is a video for you. Here I'll be talking about the 8 key things to do after performing an upgrade to Windows 10. In a previous video, I showed a step-by-step -step guide on how to perform a free upgrade from Windows 7 or 8.1 to Windows 10. And in another video, I discussed 6 key things to check for before performing a free upgrade to Windows 10. Now to further enhance a smooth transition to Windows 10 and ensure that you've got all the right things in place, here are the 8 key things to do after an upgrade to Windows 10. The first thing is to verify that your Windows 10 is licensed. Yes, checking this early enough can save you a ton of time and effort in future. Now, ending up with an unlicensed Windows 10 for any reason after the long wait is already a frustrating experience. However, you don't want to discover this a month later after you've fully customized your Windows 10 and maybe installed some new applications. To verify the activation status of your Windows 10, go to search and type see if Windows is activated. It's really that simple and click on the corresponding search result. Now that takes you to the activation window. There it should say Windows is activated with a digital license. If for any reason you end up with an unlicensed Windows 10, please drop me a comment in the comment section below and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. The second thing is to run a Windows update. Now, Windows 10 is designed by default to automatically start installing some standard applications and drivers immediately after the upgrade if you are connected to the internet. However, some applications and drivers require an initial system update to be run before they are downloaded. So once you verify that your Windows 10 is activated, then go straight ahead to run an initial system update to download and install all necessary drivers and packages required for your Windows 10 to run effectively. The third thing is to check that your camera and other devices are functional. Now, most laptops will automatically install all drivers during this initial update. However, certain devices might require you to visit the PC manufacturer website to download the corresponding drivers and install by yourself. Such devices might include your web camera, the speaker, fingerprint sensor, and maybe your Wi-Fi card as well. Now, when attempting to download drivers from manufacturer website, most manufacturers have not listed Windows 10 drivers. In that case, you will need to download either Windows 7 or 8 drivers, depending on the version of Windows your PC was shipped with. From my experience, I find Windows 7 drivers more compatible with Windows 10 than Windows 8. So if your device wouldn't work with Windows 8 driver, try installing Windows 7 drivers. For the webcam, if you if you are getting an error message saying we can't find your camera, Please follow the steps in this video that I shared some time ago to fix this problem. The fourth thing to do is to check that your system protection is turned on on all disks if you are using multiple disks and if not then you turn it on. Now by default system protection on your C drive is turned on during the upgrade However, if you are using multiple disks on your PC, then you will need to manually turn on system protection on other disks. You may also want to check your Windows firewall settings to ensure your PC is adequately protected while connected to the internet. The fifth thing to do is to check your privacy settings. Now, during the upgrade to Windows 10, you must have come across some privacy settings where you selected your preferred settings for certain privacy and policies. Now, if you left these settings with the default options, you still have a chance to change them and even more other privacy settings that were previously not presented during the upgrade. To do that from your search, you type privacy settings 
Upon clicking it, it takes you to the privacy settings page where you have about 18 series of privacy settings you could change based on your preference, ranging from the general privacy settings to location, camera, microphone, notifications, down to app diagnostics. Now, each privacy setting has a brief description of what it entails, so you can read through and select your preferred privacy setting by simply switching them on or off. The sixth thing is to verify that all key operations and applications you were previously running on your Windows 7 or 8.1 are equally running fine on your Windows 10. Now generally, all Windows 7 and 8.1 applications should work fine on Windows 10 without having to reinstall them or reconfigure them. But if you were running some enterprise um, application or services that are custom designed for Windows 7 or 8.1, then at this point, you may want to verify that such applications and services are working fine with your new Windows 10. And if not, you may consider reverting back to the previous version of Windows if, if the application is very important to you. Now, reverting back to your previous version of Windows can always be done within 30 days after you upgrade it to Windows 10. <coughs> The seventh thing is to free some memory space. Once you have verified that Windows 10 serves all your purposes right and runs effectively on your PC, then it's time to free your memory space occupied by the previous version of Windows. To do this, you go to your search and type storage. Then click on storage and then click on this PC, that's your drive C. Wait for a storage usage to load. Scroll down and click temporary files. Scroll down to where it says previous version of Windows. Then you will see how much disk space your previous version of Windows occupy. Then click on delete previous version of Windows to free this disk space. It's really that simple. The final thing to do is to reduce Windows runtime services. Now, Windows 10 comes with a series of runtime services and a good number of these services are rarely or never used or needed by the user. So at this point, you may want to turn off services you don't really need. To do that, you go to your search and type services. Click on services and it will open up an array of services you can enable, disable, set to manual or automatic or manual trigger start. Services are categorized into standard and extended services. Each service has a brief description shown on the left pane or by double clicking or pointing your mouse on the service description. You can read this description and if need be, do a little more research online to know if you actually need these services. For instance, I almost never use Bluetooth on my PC. So I will go ahead and turn off all services related to Bluetooth by simply right-clicking and selecting stop or using the button on the top pane. The same goes for print services since I never print from my PC. So to decide whether such services remain turned on until you decide to turn them back off, right-click and go to properties, then select the start up type that suits your purpose. If you notice any malfunction due to recently turned off services, then you can revisit this settings page and turn them back on. Now, turning off services you never use or need can save you a lot of key resources like power, RAM, processing resources, and it could give your system a significant speed boost depending on the, the disabled services. And that concludes this session. As usual, if you have found this video useful, Please give it a thumbs up and share with anyone who may find it useful as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button for updates on future videos. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.